Hey guys, we've just received results from some of the most important, highest profile races of the 2022 primary season so far. And looking at the Georgia governor primary results for the Republican Party, Brian Kemp wins his renomination with almost 74% of the vote. He absolutely trounces David Perdue, who doesn't even manage to crack 22%. And I mean, David Perdue does not even manage to win a single county in the state of Georgia, even counties with just hundreds of voters. So Brian Kemp really absolutely has crushed David Perdue, who was endorsed by Donald Trump. Donald Trump poured millions of dollars into the Perdue campaign, and really this just goes to show you how weak Donald Trump's endorsements have been so far in the 2022 primary cycle. The pro-Trump candidates that he has endorsed, that he has put money into, the campaigns that he has supported have been crushed by these establishment incumbent Republicans, and this governor race is no different. Brian Kemp winning almost 74% of the vote. Of course, David Perdue is a former U.S. Senator that lost to John Ossoff in the 2021 runoff election for the Senate seat, and so he will now once again be without a job, and David Perdue, of course, was tasked to run against Brian Kemp because Donald Trump was upset that Brian Kemp would not help Trump overturn the 2020 election results in the state of Georgia. And so in the state of Georgia, on the Democratic side, we have Stacey Abrams, who ran uncontested and has been nominated once again for the Democratic uh, ticket to run for governor later this year. And so looking at this race, this is going to be an identical rematch of the race we saw in 2018 between Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams. Brian Kemp in 2018 was expected to win by almost a 10-point margin according to the polls on election day. However, in the very end, he only managed to pick up 50.2% of the vote. Stacey Abrams, 48.8%. For a Democrat in a state like Georgia in 2018, this was a very impressive finish. And Stacey Abrams, of course, went on to help both Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff get elected in their Senate races in 2021. So Stacey Abrams is a big deal in Georgia for the Democratic Party. However, it must be stated that in 2022, in the political environment that we are in, Joe Biden as one of the most unpopular presidents in American history, the Democratic Party's failures in both the House and the Senate, Stacey Abrams is not in a good environment this time. This is not after two years of Donald Trump. This is now after two years of Joe Biden. And Brian Kemp as the incumbent will also have an added advantage being the incumbent governor of the state. And, you know, the polls do show this. Brian Kemp is leading by almost five points in basically every single poll that has been released and has led in every single poll that has been released. Even polls from January of last year in 2021, right after the 2020 election, they showed Brian Kemp ahead of Stacey Abrams. And this was, you know, when Donald Trump and Brian Kemp were in their big fight over the Georgia election results. So Brian Kemp really does have strong support from his own party, and I think that he is going into the 2022 race for governor in a very strong position, although Stacey Abrams, a very big deal again in the state of Georgia, I think that she definitely does have a very good chance, but, you know, in the end, Brian Kemp right now is fully expected to win this race. And if you look at the governor races that we have, I filled in the solid, likely, and lean states. Really, if you look at the races that we have left, Georgia is going to be a major race. This will decide which party will have more governors after the 2022 midterms. And so the state of Georgia really is one of the most important races. And if you look at the Senate, it is even more important. There are only really four races that are really true toss-ups at this point in time. Many of the other races like Wisconsin, Ohio, North Carolina, I mean, really expected they are going to go to the Republican Party and races in states like Colorado and New Hampshire, realistically, they will still end up in the Democratic column. So looking at the Senate results from the state of Georgia, of course, Herschel Walker wins his nomination against Gary Black. Herschel Walker very early on got the support of Donald Trump to challenge Raphael Warnock, who of course defeated Kelly Leffler along with John Ossoff, who defeated David Perdue in early 2021 in that Georgia Senate runoff. So Raphael Warnock has been renominated with 96% of the vote. Herschel Walker easily wins the Republican nomination with the support of Donald Trump as well as the support of Mitch McConnell, although there has been a lot of eyebrows raised about the fact that Herschel Walker really is not the best candidate. He does have quite a dark past. He does have many allegations against him, so we'll see how this plays out. I think that Herschel Walker is not the best candidate, but just because of the fact that the 2022 national environment does favor the GOP, he definitely has a very good chance at unseating Ralphie Warnock, who was just elected last year. So, 
Looking at this race, we now have the two candidates, Raphael Warnock on the Democratic side as the incumbent, Herschel Walker as the challenger, of course, in 2021. Raphael Warnock defeated Kelly Loeffler with 51% in that runoff, but Kelly Loeffler was a terrible candidate. He was, of course, appointed by Brian Kemp to fill the vacancy left by Johnny Isaacson, and Kelly Loeffler did not even live in the state, was the richest member of the Senate with a net worth of, I believe, almost a billion dollars. So Kelly Loeffler was a horrible candidate in a race where the Democratic Party had the advantage as Joe Biden just won the presidential race here in Georgia, and of course Democrats came out in droves to help elect both Warnock and Ossoff. In 2022, the Democratic Party really, really will not have that sort of enthusiasm behind them just because of the fact that Joe Biden and the Democrats in Congress are really flailing to make any changes to the fact that our country is seeing you know, some of the highest inflation rates in decades, uh, you know, shortages all the time. So the Democratic Party really is in a very tough position, and that puts Raphael Warnock in a tough position as he defends his seat against Herschel Walker later this year. If you do look at the polling released for this race, you will see that Raphael Warnock has not been leading in many of the latest polls that, that's been released, although, you know, the margin is still very f small, with Walker leading by just an average of 0 0.5, according to Real Clear Politics. So this is still a very close race, and the polls in Georgia are typically quite accurate, while Raphael Warnock Warnock was expected to win his race according to the polls earlier last year. So the polling numbers in the state of Georgia are pretty accurate if you compare it to many other states. And so that's what makes it such a big deal. In the state of Georgia, uh, you know, one of the only four really true toss-up races that we have, uh, you know, whether or not Herschel Walker can defeat Raphael Warnock really will make a huge impact on whether or not Republicans will be able to take back the Senate later this year. So um, those are really the two major races that we saw, the races for the Senate as well as the governorship in the state of Georgia. But another race I want to look at just a little bit is the race for Secretary of State. Brad Raffensperger has been now projected the winner of the Republican primary for Secretary of State. Of course, Raffensperger also hugely defied Donald Trump and the fact that he wanted to overturn the election results in Georgia. He even released a tape. So Brad Raffensperger really was on Trump's kill list for a very long time and obviously still is, but he was able to win with 52% of the vote against Jody Heiss, who got the support of Donald Trump and did support Trump's election lies. So Brad Raffensperger Raffensperger wins an outright majority in this race, and so that obviously means that he will avoid a runoff. And the reason why you have these runoff races in the southern states, we also have runoff races in Arkansas as well as Alabama, is because of former Jim Crow laws. Um, you know, if you had one black candidate win a plurality against many white candidates, of course, that black candidate would end up winning the race. But because of the runoff system, the white candidates and the white voters will be able to vote for that white candidate in that runoff and defeat that black candidate who won the plurality in the original election. So that is why, you know, these runoff rules are are only really in states in the South. They're really found nowhere else. So, um, you know, obviously things have changed quite a bit since then, but that is the reason why we have these runoff races. Personally, I think that they are a complete waste of time. Uh, typically the candidate that wins in the, or typically the candidate that wins that plurality originally will end up winning the race in the end. So on the Democratic side, B. Nguyen has won her race with 40, or has won the plurality and will go, of course, to a runoff very soon. Uh, the second candidate is still um, not decided in the Secretary of State Democratic primary. So these are the major races that we saw in the state of Georgia. We also did see Marjorie Taylor Greene win her re-election with almost 70% of the vote. So Marjorie Taylor Greene will be renominated by the Republican Party and will easily go on to win her re-election to a second term in the House of Representatives. As well as that, on the Democratic side in the 7th Congressional District, we also had another very important race. Lucy McBath defeats Carolyn Bordeaux, and the reason why this is such a big deal is because this is the first race of the primary season so far where two incumbents have gone up against each other. This is because of redistricting. So Lucy McBath and Carolyn Bordeaux in, or Carolyn Bordeaux in the same race, Lucy McBath ends up with 63% of the vote, a very strong victory for her. So you know, this is, um, you know, we are seeing here one of the Democratic incumbents being unseated, and she will obviously leave office after 2023 in early January. So uh, the races in Georgia, I think, are going to be some of the most exciting this year in November, as well as some of the highest profile races. We also did see a very, very high profile race in the 28th district of Texas between 
Henry um, Quayer and Jessica Cisneros. So at this point, Henry Quayer is expected to win this race. If you look at the odds here, he currently has a 95% chance of winning to Cisneros' 6% percent and if you look at you know the graph here this race really has been a lot of ups and downs for both candidates the original primary was on the 1st of March where Quayer won 48.6 percent of the vote Cisneros 46.7 Quayer has served in the house since 2005 and this was a rematch of the 2020 primary where of course Henry Quayer defeated Cisneros with 51.8 percent so Cisneros does do a little bit better with 49.8 percent at this point in time and think that she will win by I think that she will lose by a very very small margin and of course Cisneros is notable because she has the endorsements of Bernie Sanders AOC Elizabeth Warren she is supported by the progressive wing of the party and Quayer is of course a lot more of a moderate and if you look at where their support is from Cisneros has a lot of that support from the San Antonio area those urban areas of course those urban counties are obviously a lot more progressive than the more rural counties where Quayer gets his votes from so really that is saving him at this point if you look at the size lead of course obviously there is a huge difference between you know location in terms of where these votes are going to and so looking at the odds here of course the numbers went up and down so much over the last couple of hours I mean at one point Quayer's numbers went down to less than 60 cents per share although it has gone up since then but this race really is very very close and it is again another loss for the progressive wing of the democratic party and another win for the more establishment side so i think that this was obviously a little bit of a surprise uh for queer to actually win this race because he was expected really to lose for a very long time before the primary or not a very long time but just the last couple of days just narrows his numbers had gone up significantly in the last couple of days but she did end up coming just a little bit short if you look at the 2020 results of course turnout was a lot higher but this was also in a presidential election year where they also voted joe biden as the democratic nominee so this race in 2020 was a course a lot more high profile because of the fact that you did have a presidential race at the top of the ticket so we did see a lot more votes but I mean the vote difference is a lot smaller this time around you know less than 200 votes separate Cisneros and Quayer and so at this point Henry Quayer is probably very very likely to win this race there's not going to be a recount and so Quayer is going to also win his race in November just he is uh, I mean like a seven eight time incumbent and this is also a predominantly democratic district so a win again of course for the establishment wing of the democratic party and i also want to look at the other results that we had uh last night in the state of arkansas and of course these races were on the 24th of may and these results will continue to uh, be updated over the next couple of days so looking at the race in arkansas sarah huckabee sanders wins the race for governor of course the current incumbent republican is term limited so sarah huckabee sanders winning 83 percent of the vote she of course is the former press secretary to Donald Trump, I believe his second press secretary, and so Sanders will easily win that race in November as well. On the Democratic side, Chris Jones is the projected winner, and so he will obviously go on to lose in November just because this is, again, the state of Arkansas. If you look at the Senate numbers, John Boozman, the incumbent Republican, has been projected the winner in his race as well, so John Boozman will not lose to John uh, Jake Baquette, who is more on the Trump side of the Republican Republican Party. Of course, Sean Boozman did get the endorsement of Donald Trump, even though he did not support overturning the election. He did still get Trump's endorsement, and he will go on to win with almost 60% of the vote. On the Democratic side, Natalie Jones and uh, Natalie James is the projected winner with 54% of the vote. But again, she will obviously also lose to John Boozman in November because this is still the state of Arkansas and a state where the Republican Party basically wins every single statewide race. And if you look at the results in Alabama, there's not going to be too much difference here the winners of the republican primary are pretty much going to go on to win the race in the very end so looking at the u.s senate primary in the state of arkansas katie Britt and mo brooks are in a highly contested race they have now both advanced to a runoff of course mo brooks did get the support and the endorsement of donald trump very early on but trump did retract that endorsement after brooks had a pretty disappointing uh, performance in the race uh, up until 
the last couple of months and so Katie Britt has come out on top winning that plurality but because of course this is a southern state in the very very much in the deep south we will have a runoff between Britt and Brooks where Britt is pretty much going to win at this point. She already, she already won 45% of the vote. Getting that extra 5% will be very easy. On the Democratic side Will Boyd is the projected winner and on the governor race on the governor level Kay Ivey the incumbent Republican has won with 54% of the vote. Not really the strongest performance. I mean this is even worse than Brian Kemp who had a much um, stronger Donald Trump endorsed opponent in and also a former senator so Kay Ivey uh, this is obviously not a very strong performance for her but she still did win every county and she still did end up winning the race on the Democratic side there will be a runoff but again uh, Kay Ivey is very likely now to be re-elected the governor of the state of Alabama and so yeah we had some pretty important races uh, especially the ones in the state of Georgia Brian Kemp almost 74% of the vote. This is the big one. This really is a blow to the Trump coalition in the Republican Party as well as, of course, to Donald Trump. His endorsements are clearly not vote are clearly not working. Voters still like him, but voters are not just going to vote for mindless candidates because Donald Trump says they should. And so, you know, this is clearly highlighted by the fact that David Perdue, a former U.S. senator, performed absolutely horribly in this race. I mean, for a U.S. senator to win just 22% of the vote in a statewide race that really is a terrible result I mean Brian Kemp did much better than the other two Republican incumbents in basically all the other races that we saw um on the 24th and so Stacey Abrams of course did win uncontested so we will have some pretty exciting elections this November Brian Kemp against Stacey Abrams for the governorship of Georgia as well as Herschel Walker against Raphael Warnock on the Senate level both of these races obviously are very major key races so yeah that will be this video thank you guys so much for watching make sure to join my discord server if you have a link at the very top of the description below I also have channel memberships for just $1.99 a month uh, make sure you check those out if you are interested in gaining some extra perks on this channel. Again, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below which races you are watching in this primary season. As, of course, we do have a long list of races left on the primary calendar. As you can see, we are only, I believe, about less than a fifth of the way through. Um, if this is going to load, but really we still have many races, especially in the month of June. We have many primaries, uh, and the next races we will have are from the states of California, Iowa, Mississippi, Montana, New Jersey, New Mexico, and South Dakota on the 7th of June, and I will keep you guys updated on all of those races on this channel. So again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.